What's up, guys? It's Miles, the You Betcha guy here, and it is holiday season. And that means that You Betcha has a crazy Black Friday deal going on right now. You order something over 25 bucks on our website, you get a free hat. That's it. There's no other strings attached. So you got to go to oubetcha.com slash shop. Get yourself something online as a gift for yourself. Mom, dad, sister, brother, you name it. You get a free hat with that order. Go order now while supplies last. Oubetcha.com slash shop. Enjoy the podcast. Hey, what, what you fuck you piss off? Quit having, it, quit having a wank at me expense, yeah. You like making fun of me, innit? Is that what it is? You like me, innit? <laughs> right. What's all this then? What's all this then? What's all this then? What are you doing? You think you think I'm a joke? Is that what it is? You yeah. think I'm stupid? Stupid. You think I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I like Rochester City. Oh, <laughs> minus what and a half. Hello, everybody. How's it hanging? Welcome oh, back to the <laughs> Goose Egg Gambling Podcast, <laughs> the only podcast that talks real, real football and. Quidditch. And Quidditch. <laughs> Quidditch. You, you gotta go Quidditch. No. And Quidditch. They don't use the D, do you Right, know? Quidditch. <laughs> Quidditch. In it. In it. Well, welcome back, everyone. The only pod... Again, we are the Goose Gambling Podcast. The only podcast that stands by the theory that if you don't have a top 10 quarterback, you should probably consider moving on from them. That's the end of this accent, and I'm your host, Matt, a.k.a. Mr. Freeze. And, and, we're, and we are presented by DraftKings. And we are presented by DraftKings. And I'm also joined by my co-host Jared, aka the second coming of Paul Kraus. Yeah, I like that one. There you That's go. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, you, you hit me with the Vikings trivia earlier this week. So mm-hmm. yeah, I like to intercept this episode too. So Ooh. we'll see. Happen- we'll see what happens. All right, I'm excited. <laughs> now I'm a little on my edge of my seat here. I got a whiskey sour Ooh. right now. You hear that ice just rolling around that red solo cup, guys? I, I haven't tried it yet, so let's do a taste test. Live, te- live taste test. That's actually really good. Let's go. Yeah. Tastes like a cream delight. There we go. All right. Anyway. Cream delight was actually my uh, rapper name back in the day. No shit. <laughs> no. <it wasn't>. Oh. <laughs> okay. But it is now. Um, hope everyone had a great holiday weekend. I did it. I ba- did. Thanksgiving is canceled. I'm so over, <laughs> I'm so over this. I won one game the entire weekend. Which one? It was uh, Bills minus six and a half over the Saints. Yeah, that was a lock. Looking back at it now. But. Right. So, I, I, yeah, I did Lions minus three and a half. Okay. And then I missed. You didn't go with the money line after all. Uh-uh. Good that's, for you. That was too much. Or, yeah, plus three and a half, I should say. Good for you. Missed the Cowboys bet completely. And then Bills was a little locked. Yeah, city. we were a little off on that under. But who would have thought the Raiders offense would have come to life like they did? Yeah, I was a little hammered for that game, so I don't really remember Already? much. About, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> was, was rough. Yeah, I got to do Thanksgiving at Jared's house. Yeah, I... Yeah, I pounded a lot of bush lights that day. There but you go. It was good, though. I won, so that's all that matters. That is. And you had an awful weekend. I did. Which oh. gives, which makes me sleep well at night, so. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I and I'm just ending November on a brutal cold streak. I started off so hot, and who would have thought? Lo and behold, it would have come back to bite me. All yeah. my bragging, all my boasting. But I'm excited about December and January because this is the time of the year I'm most confident. Like, playoff NFL football... Out of all the sports, that is the sport, or that is like the niche that I'm most narrowed in on is playoff football. Yeah, same. I went undefeated last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I rode the Buccaneers the whole entire way. Same. And I just, yeah, if you, if you, can, find, if you can find that, obviously this is simple, but <laughs> if you find that Super Bowl team early and ride with them. You can make money just regardless. Easily. And the Bucs, I believe, were not favored in every game except for the Washington game. I think the Saints were favored over them. I know yep. the Packers were favored over them, and I know the Chiefs were yes, favored over them. Yes, exactly. Yep. I, I don't, yeah. I don't forget the spread of that uh, Washington game, but yeah. I think it was pretty, I think it was like two or like something pretty close. Cause mm-hmm. even, cause they were coming into the playoffs with a good amount of question marks for some reason, which looking back at it now, I don't remember what they were. Was that game in Washington? It was, yeah. Cause That's the so Bucks weird. were a wild card team. No one talks about that. They were a, uh, fifth seed i believe and mm-hmm. they tri- made it all the way to the damn they did the whole damn thing and then devin white had like an insane playoffs run. yeah he did mm-hmm. yeah so i was gonna actually ask you what sport or like time of the year are you most confident in betting would you say yeah I, I would say yeah your playoffs you realize if they play tough teams or not you, yep you always go with better coaching always and you usually always go with better quarterback experience which is why rookie quarterbacks will never pan out they'll maybe go to the championship game but that's about it mm-hmm. the close i mean most confidence I've ever had in a 
rookie quarterback was Russell Wilson in 2012. Yeah, I was pretty confident in Mahomes this rookie year when they lost to the Patriots in the AFC Championship. I think it was the second year, actually. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it kind of was his rookie year. He didn't play his rookie year. Sure. We'll, we'll go by that, though. Yeah, exactly. That's what I go by anyways. Yeah, this is we're about to get hot, guys. Exactly. So yeah. you guys have tuned in right at the right time. It's hot boy January. You knew, you knew once you heard the awful British accents right when you turned this <laughs> podcast on that you made the right choice by tuning in. Um. So... We were recording this podcast late at night on Tuesday. It's, it's 2 a.m. right now. <laughs> 2 a.m. like in where wherever we were doing the accents of. <laughs> right, yeah. No, it's it's about 8 p.m. on a Tuesday. We're recording it right now because in about, in way less than 12 hours, in like nine hours, I am boarding a flight to Nolens mm-hmm. for the Cowboys-Saints football game. You excited? I'm very excited. I have never been to New Orleans at all, and I'm just super excited to soak in the Wednesday and Thursday night culture. Oh yeah, it's gonna be of a, the city electric. Yeah, it'll be a really good time. We're going there to watch the game. The it is the Cowboys versus the Saints. Um, the spread right now is currently four points. We are of course using spreads provided us by our gracious partners at DraftKings. Mm-hmm. Always love them. Always love their spreads. Um, four point spread. The money line is minus 195 for the Cowboys, plus 165 for the Saints. The over-under is 47. Main storyline of this game is Mike McCarthy is out. Right. He is on the COVID list, and Dan Quinn is acting as the head oh, God. coach. Which I'm surprised by. Why not Kellen Moore? Is it just because well, Dan Quinn has the yeah. head coaching experience? Dan Quinn, even though he's a shitty head coach, he's got a He has experience in. doing it. Yeah, he's, he's got experience of being shitty at head coach, so... It's just so interesting to me because I think everyone kind of assumes right now Kellen Moore is going to be the shoe in. He's going to be the next big head coaching candidate this year, mm-hmm. which I still we talked about this earlier on the podcast a few episodes ago. If you're the Cowboys, I think you got to just get rid of McCarthy and keep Kellen Moore because their offense is what is keeping them going. They've had a rough November and mm-hmm. their offense is what's keeping them afloat right now. But one thing with that is they don't have Cooper and they don't have CeeDee Lamb like last couple games here. They're coming back up. this week, though. Do, how, okay, what do we know about the COVID test here? Do we know which players are positive or not? And we do not. That's a good point. And we, like you said, it's early in the week. It is Tuesday, so this might change. But huge factor in this game. Huge factor. But those are not those are not COVID players. Those are injured players that are expected to come back. So assuming they all test negative, right? Those guys should be coming back. And Demarcus Lawrence is also expected to return. Yeah, has he been much of a factor this year? I, feel I, like, I don't think so, but I think there's still that leadership factor at least. Yeah, get that pass rush on uh, Taysom Hill. Yeah, it, it is looking like it's going to be Taysom Hill. Zeke is expected to sit as of right now Okay, just because they're going to try and rest him up, I think, for this playoff push. But they got to be careful because that division is not a lock for them anymore. They've had a rough November, and Washington and Philadelphia have had good Novembers. <laughs> Giants have not. The Giants, have, <laughs> the Giants, I honestly think, are the worst run franchise in the NFL right now. Yeah, poor Saquon. He's a bust. We've no, talked. About, we've talked he's about this off bust. the air. He's At this point, he is though. He's had one good season, and he's been injured and just not a factor any other season. So I think he's going to have like a Leonard Fournette type of career. You yeah, know? he'll go to a contender. I think so. Like he's kind of downgrading, like Leonard Fournette. Yeah, once Tom Brady goes to the Lions or something to right, prove exactly. he can win there, <laughs> Saquon <laughs> yeah. will join forces with him there. They'll get him for a six round pick or something like that. Tom Brady would look great in that light blue. He would. Yeah. DCTB12. <laughs> that would actually be pretty. And if he could actually win with the Lions, I honestly think if he went there, he could do it. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think he could well, here's the, the thing like, like free, big free agents see that Tom Brady's with Detroit and then they'll, every, you know, yep. Krog, Edelman. Yep. They'll all come out of retirement. Uh, Randy Moss will come out Troy of retirement. Troy Brown. Yeah. <laughs> Troy Brown. <laughs> Rodney Harrison. <laughs> Rodney Harrison. Yeah. They'll all come out for sure. There you go. So yeah, be on the lookout for that in 2030, probably. Oh, 2035, probably. Yeah, he'll he'll make a couple of runs throughout the entire league and just win it all for everyone. I guess at that point, what else are you gonna do? Father Time, more like Father Tom. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the first joke that'll fall flat today, but not the last. So back to the Saints Cowboys game. Uh, Kamara and Mark Ingram are both expected to return, but the big news for the Saints is that Taysom Hill is at least going to be getting some very valuable QB1 reps. We don't know. He's not named the starter officially yet. Okay. But we expect he will be like a part of the offense. And I, I don't blame the Saints at this point. They have nothing to lose. They're still kind of in the playoff hunt a little bit. Yeah. They, and they like, need they need to do something on offense. They look like dog shit on Thanksgiving night. Yeah. Both those teams had a really rough Thanksgiving. So they're both going to be coming in with that like chip on their shoulder. Mm-hmm. 
I went back and forth on this game a good amount just because I don't think Mike McCarthy being out is a huge factor. It's it is a factor. It's your head coach. It cost half a point in the spread. The spread went down from four and a half to four. Okay. After the news. But I don't think Mike McCarthy's a big difference maker. Right. I think wasn't Cliff Kingsbury out for COVID this year and they won the game just fine with the Cardinals. I think yep. that happened earlier this year. So yeah, we'll, I think we'll, it's easier than ever with Zoom and all that to still have your team prepared. You just need to have a good like trigger man who knows like game situations what to do. And Dex got good leadership on offense. And yeah. It, on, and again, I'll have, obviously if Cooper and Lamb come back, which they should. Yeah. That'll obviously be a huge factor. So I'm going to ride Cowboys as this one. See, I've gone back and forth, and I think I'm going to go Saints just because I think they're a slightly more desperate team. I think Sean Payton's a better coach than Dan Quinn, and it's at it's in New Orleans, which that is a pretty solid home field. A primetime New Orleans game is pretty a pretty electric environment. Yeah, that that place will be rocking. Yeah, so I'm going with Saints plus four. I'm not super confident about it. I'm going to still wait and see. Like we have to figure out who those extra Cowboys who are on the COVID yep. list are. If there's like some O linemen or something, that's going to be a big difference. This is definitely a day of bet. Not, exactly. Not an early week. This is, yeah, this is not one I am recommending you take right now at 8 p.m. on Tuesday. Wait till about, I don't know, 2 in the afternoon, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. About yeah, I'll, I'll see. I'll go down Bourbon Street a little bit on New Orleans, see if I'm just soaking in the New Orleans culture. Oh, yeah, you're definitely going to bet the Saints then. There's no Oh, way yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to walk around like, all right, guys, I'm thinking Cowboys. <laughs> You'll get your ass beat. Exactly. Exactly. I'll get thrown into a gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... Thursday night football, that's this. I was looking at the other NFL games, and there is just not a lot of good NFL games this weekend. Yeah. there's It's another dead week, but usually on the dead weeks, you get these crazy, insane finishes games. So we'll see what happens. That is true. The, la- like the last few weeks, there hasn't been that many great matchups, but there has been like really crazy finishes. It's been bad for my wallet just because I feel like Vegas even is getting taken for a ride a little bit. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's rough. But so... I'm going to take this week to focus mainly on college football because that's where my Huge mind, week. My mind has been in a lot in college football lately. It's been such a fun month for college football just because of all the coaching news. Yeah, a couple of days, really. Yeah, like the last seven days, really. Like Lincoln Riley's going to USC. That is huge. Insane. That is going to be monstrous for the sport. And he like left in the middle of the night, too. Yeah, he pulled a... Well, oh, who's what was the name of the Falcons? Patrino? Who did did Patrino yeah, do that? Yeah, he did a Bobby Patrino. When, when Mike Zimmer called him a gutless bastard. Yeah, yeah, this is, yeah. It's Zimmer's best quote. <laughs> it is. Yeah, he did that. Someone else did that too. Left in the middle of the night. I guess Kevin Durant kind of did. Well, I, the uh, the Baltimore Colts left in uh, yeah. Baltimore in like 1982, middle of the night. Literally like, packed the buses and left. All the Mayflower trucks, and they drove all the way to Indianapolis in the middle of the night. That's so sick. So he, he yeah, he pulled the Baltimore Colt. It's always fun when stuff like this happen, like when people like, oh, like yeah. double cross or do something like that. It just gives so much. It's like a Game of Thrones episode, really. Pretty much, yeah. And honestly, I, I, I've come to find that I love these off season drama movies way more than the games themselves lately. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. I think it's just like the speculation of it all. Like anything oh, yeah. could happen. And, and you see just, so many, so many mad fans on social media everywhere. Too. Yeah, Lincoln Riley's Twitter mentions have got to be a rough place to be right now. Yeah, that's when you hit mute. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he's not on Twitter right now. I'm sure he's he just bought some sick beachside property with his huge payday he's about to get. And I, okay, I don't know if this is confirmed or not, but like apparently a part of the USC deal is that he gets a private jet full access 24 seven. Good for him. I would hope so. Like him and his family. That'll be awesome for him. So like even that alone, even it's like even if you make like 50 grand a year or 20 grand. Yeah, a year, exactly. Like that would be worth it. That's free airline travel whenever you want. For you can just life. sell the airline off to other people. Yeah, exactly. Is there an Airbnb for private jets? I think there is, but we don't know about it. Yeah, I can't imagine they've invited us to the app. There's no way I could afford that. I can't even afford to rent my car out, probably. (laughs) Start renting out my Ford Fusion. (laughs) That'll be a fun time. But I made 15 bucks today. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But then I have to fill it with $20 of gas. Oh, yeah, that's rough. (laughs) So, yeah, that happened. Brian Kelly is going to LSU, Mm -hmm. which, like, there's playoff teams that are going to be without coaches, like, potentially. It's potentially college football playoff teams. If oh, yeah. Notre Dame can get in, they will not have a head coach for the playoffs. And then Bob Stoops is coming back to <laughs> Oklahoma. Is like, that a, is that confirmed? Yeah, that sounds officially official. Let's go. Yeah. So I don't know. Because I know, last I heard they were they were throwing a blank checkbook at Kling, at Kingsbury for mm. Oklahoma. That's the last I heard. I didn't know, but I've not checked Twitter in a while. I don't think Kingsbury goes back. If no. It's going well in Cardinals. No. If. If they were like what they usually are this time of year, like in the six and seven range, I think he probably would. But right. apparently he loves his job. And yeah, and he works with, I mean, he's got a great offense right now. Got a good young I was completely wrong about Kingsbury this year. 
I say that now, I'll probably just shit the bed now, hopefully. Well, I mean, they are they are still kind of like downward trending a little bit, so we'll, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, so that's a lot of coaching carousel. A lot of players are transferring. Are you a pro player transferring guy or no? Um, yeah, you got to be. I am too. It's always funny. I like my dad and like I think the older generation is not at all. But when you look at it objectively, I think it makes all the sense in the world. You have one. If you actually think you have a chance of having a future with the sport, you have one opportunity to do it. You have to go where you'll play. And I think most college kids anyway transfer colleges anyway. Hundred like, percent. Like if your major's not working with, with what, or you're just like, like not making friends, or you're just not like loving the location. You have one life. I'm all for just mobility and all in all aspects. Even like in the pros, like I'm pro player yeah. mobility in the NBA. I'm enjoying that it's happening more and more in the NFL. And these are like 18 year old kids, so obviously they're probably not going to make the right decision right away. Yeah, and they need to find a good fit, especially when they're having like. The whole if like if they're coming from a small town, they have all this pressure on them to like yeah. stay local or do something like that. Yeah, no loyalty to the game. That's fine by me. So I'm all for it. But in terms of on the field action, the biggest game I think of the entire football weekend is Georgia versus Alabama. Yeah. SEC championship. Yep. I am so excited for this game. I've put I placed my biggest bet that I've placed in a while on this game. And I took Alabama plus six and a half. The oh. spread is six and a half. The over under is 50 and a half, and I'm leaning the over on that as well. I would do, I think Alabama's gonna start. It's gonna be one of those bet them early games if you wanna bet Alabama. Mm -hmm. I could see Alabama jump to a lead early in the first quarter, the first half. Yep. So if you were to bet Alabama, I would do first half, first quarter. You think? Yes. I think Georgia pulls away. They just have too much gas. Alabama's not really Alabama this year. They're just kind of off on defense. They're off. It's either their offense is really good and their defense is bad or vice versa. They just don't play well as a unit quite yet. Okay. So, and Georgia has just no holes yet, but they also haven't had crazy competition yet this year. I so mean, hypothetically, let's say I've already placed this bet. So I need to continue to keep myself excited about it. Oh yeah. I, th I think Alabama is more battle tested. Yeah. And, and when it comes to playoff and whatever, mm -hmm. you always want to go with the battle tested team. Yeah, but I agree. I just lean... I just think Georgia wins by a touchdown or more. The six and a half is a it's a tricky number. Yes. Because anything could happen yeah. with that. But Georgia is 0-6 in the last six versus Alabama. I think that's a big factor. I think that's a big monkey on the back. Georgia, if unless they lose 50 to 0, they're in the playoffs regardless of what happens in this game. As they should be. Yep, I agree. Alabama is not. Alabama's a more desperate team. Alabama more, needs this win. They have win. more to play for. They need this win more. Yes. And then yeah. There's only been one assistant coach to beat Nick Saban. Yep. And Georgia has only seen one top 25 offense this entire season. Right. Tennessee. Alabama is top five in points per game. This is going to be by far the best team Georgia's played. And I still think they win the game. I think it might be an overtime, which is why I think the six could come in hand, like the six and a half. Like if it's overtime, they would just win by six. Because there's no extra points, I believe. Well, it's two point conversions after the first overtime. Then yep. They... So say like Alabama gets stopped right away, then Georgia scores just six to win it. <laughs> right. You're thinking of a very and, specific exactly. Yeah. Here. <laughs> I, I, I looked into the future. I pulled my Raven Simone. Oh, I did my that's so Raven type thing, and that's how I see it happening. I see this game going to overtime. Alabama gets stopped in Georgia. It's going to be a five hour game on CBS. It yeah, exactly. Is. I can't wait to watch that for five straight oh, hours. It's going to be a blast. So many commercial breaks. Oh my God. I'm so excited. Yep. And plus, Georgia's only 10 and five against the spread this mm -hmm. year, which is interesting to me. But their spreads have been massive too. Like exactly. 30 points. Yeah, they've had like 22 plus probably the last like month or so. Right. And the under is six and two, which is a little concerning because I am leaning the over, but I just think both those teams are going to put on a lot of point, put up a lot of points. I think 50 and a half is pretty generous. I don't hate that. Because I said, like I said, over time, I have this full vision of how this game is going <laughs> to turn out completely. George is going to go off to hot There's going to be Chick-fil-A ads everywhere. Oh, yeah. 100%. In Atlanta. Um, they play it. Yep. In Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Yep. It'll be. I can just see the white uniforms that Alabama mm -hmm. will have. I'm just, I don't know what it is. The last two years or so, I've grown to become a pretty big Nick Saban fan. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I used to just not like him. I used to think he was rude for yelling at his players, but like 
He's had a couple good press conferences and stuff lately that have like really won him over. Did you see mind. like last week? He's like, I I just wanted those guys to have fun. And yeah, like before they were just screaming at us. Yeah, players. exactly. <laughs> it's like what the fuck are you talking about? I, I saw a, a TikTok of that where he was like, Yeah, like I just told the guys go out there and have fun. And then like it was like earlier this season when they were up fifty to zero, he's yelling at them for having twelve men on the field on a on the kneel down to end of the game. <laughs> It's like I get what you're, what you're trying to say here, but it's hard to say that when you're literally screaming and like saying like this is how we lose games. It's like I just want you guys to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, dipshit, get off the field. Hey, remember we're a family out there. Go have fun. <laughs> Turn that frown upside down. Are you having fun yet? Just screaming at some guy who's injured on the field. <laughs> Are you having fun yet? <laughs> we're only beating Georgia Southern by fifty. This is Alabama, <laughs> yeah. god damn it. All right, have fun, guys. <laughs> yeah, have fun. <laughs> Be safe out there. Yeah. Do you know he eats oatmeal, like, cream pies for breakfast every morning? Yeah, I heard him? about that. Yeah. I don't even like them that much. No, I used to actually kind of like them, but that's just a little psychotic in my I opinion. can see zebra cakes. I can't see cream. Zebra cakes are not breakfast food. Oatmeal, cream pies are breakfast It's food. all sugar anyway. Yeah, I suppose, but at least oatmeal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, a breakfast food. It's a marketing gimmick. Probably. He's probably got some sick sponsorship with them or something yeah that and aflac yeah what's up with those i don't know they must pay him a shitload for that i wonder how much they pay belichick to do the subway ones too yeah and tom brady yeah because tom brady i guarantee you has never no. once eaten a subway sandwich in his life no he probably hasn't stepped in a subway in 20 years apparently yeah he ate pretty bad in college but yeah i guarantee you since he's entered the pros he has not been to a subway like the dude doesn't eat strawberries you think he's gonna eat that sweaty chicken there <laughs> that's not even chicken i guarantee it well what's funny it's like they call it oven roasted chicken but mm -hmm. there's grill marks on it that's that's a little scary it doesn't make any sense i also love how burger king invented flame broiled Right. what does that mean i yeah they cook it on a flame they say, I guess. they say we're the only burgers that are flame broiled it's like yeah no shit that's not a real word i don't think <laughs> Bro, i guess broiling something is it's like a setting in the oven i never use yeah i think it's like a top heat not a bottom heat good for burger king yeah so yeah i'm taking alabama six and a half and i feel way more confident in this than i have in any bet in a long time i placed wow i placed a couple units on this one because i'm i'm gonna i we were talking to Ryan, the t-shirt guy, friend of the podcast last night, and he was saying sometimes with betting, you just got to go for your go with your gut and take one bet you really like rather than tons that you kind of like. So that's the strategy I'm going to try and adopt. Yeah, we saw, we, we saw how well that went for him. He took the Seahawks. We both told him not to do that. Just because he has a bad strategy, a good strategy doesn't mean he's going to get good results out of it. Right. He just went into it blindly and he went off past judgments. He's not as big of a football fan. As you and I, he doesn't have the football IQ that right. you and I have. Like, yeah, if you know the sport, like if he were to b trust his gut with UFC, different Exa story. Exactly. But You've watched it for years and years and understand the dynamics. But if I were to trust my gut and bet UFC, I don't think that would work. No, I would. I would find some way to be less than 50 percent, even if I just coin flipped every game. Right. It, exactly. It would be awful. So SEC championship, that's game of the weekend. I'm I'm looking forward to just five hours of Chick-fil-A ads and oh, Nick yeah. Saban screaming at his players to have fun. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a great time. Hey, football fans. Jared, I know you're one of those. Hey, that's me. That is you. So who doesn't love an action-packed, high-scoring NFL game? <laughs> I know you do. I, I love it. Yeah. I love nothing more. But here's the thing. As much as we love the high-scoring games... With the latest no-brainer from DraftKings Sportsbook, which is the official betting partner of the NFL and this podcast. Hell yeah. With that latest no-brainer, you'll be a winner once a single point is scored. You don't need a gunslinger. You don't need a shootout. You just need a single point to be scored. Mm -hmm. Love it. New customers who bet just $1 on any team to score on an NFL game. Any team. Any team. You could pick the Chiefs. You can pick the Rams. Right. You can pick the Jets if you're feeling really bold, if you really want to work for your money. You're feeling frisky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They score a single point. You can win $100 in free bets. It's that simple. It's that easy. If the sports book isn't available in your state yet, if you're not in a legal state, no worries. You can still get in on the NFL action. You can play for huge cash prizes all season long with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports Contest. Daily Fantasy Sports have taken over in our office right now. Everyone feels like, I feel like everyone's playing it. Everyone's having a good time. Everyone's winning money. Somehow. Especially me. My fantasy team is done. So yep, DraftKings is a lifesaver right now. Yeah, it keeps you interested every Sunday. Exactly. Even just like the Thursday games you, would, you wouldn't you would watch regardless. Or like the Monday night game last, last night. You can just always find something to cheer for. Endless fun. Yeah, exactly. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes just with their first deposit. 
All you got to do, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code YOUBETCHA. That is Y-O-U-B-E-T-C-H-A. Bet $1 on any team to score, and you'll win $100 in free bets if that team does score. If they score, you score with promo code YOUBETCHA this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL and the Goose Egg Gambling Podcast. Yep. Must be 21 years or older, New Jersey, Indiana, and Pennsylvania only, new customers only, minimum $5 deposit and $1 wager required, one per customer, restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. The other super interesting game I think this weekend is the Big Ten Championship. Jim Harbaugh, how did you do it? Yeah, they... Round of applause, Jim Harbaugh, everyone. Finally, finally did it. Got the monkey off his back. They kicked the shit out of Ohio State. Murdered him. Like, Absolute well, bloodbath. You could tell by the body language of Ohio State, they didn't want to play. Yeah. They kept getting blown off the line and everything. He just got completely hit in the mouth. That DN for Michigan is so good. Oh, Hutchinson? Yep. Yeah, he's, he's tough. He's a stud. He's definitely a first rounder. Yeah, 100%. He might be first overall after. He's got Jets written all over him. You think? I was going to say, <laughs> Detroit might have seen him just right across the pond. They're like, oh. Oh, they got Thibodeau. Dan Campbell might be. They got that Thibodeau in uh, Oregon. Sounds like he's going to go number one. Oh, yeah. Defensive end. Yeah, we'll see. It'll be fun, but getting ahead of ourselves a bit there. Yeah, so we got Iowa versus Michigan. The uh, most ideal Big Ten championship game you could think of. So much punting. <laughs> It's going to be a lot of punting. The over-under is 43 and a half. Oh, yeah. That sounds like a Big Ten game. <laughs> yeah, the spread is 10 and a half with Michigan favored. So you texted me after the game, and you said... Right after the game. Right after the game, you said, I am hammering whoever Michigan's playing. Yep. And you think just because come-down game? The, maybe the biggest come-down game of all time. Yep. Like, that's Michigan's... Probably their biggest win in five to ten years. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. That's... The monkey off Harbaugh's back. That's Harbaugh's biggest win since the NFC Championship to get into the Super Bowl for sure. Yeah, I would agree with that easily. So, and then Iowa's—they're not a bad team. I, I don't no. love—I don't love Iowa, but they'll come more ready to play. They're, I mean, they've lost more. They're not—they're not, not going to get caught slipping. Iowa is never going to get caught slipping. Right, and I think Iowa usually plays well in Big Ten championship games. So I'm ha hammering Iowa plus ten and a half here. So I was going to do that for the longest time, but then I did some did some research, looked into some numbers. Did you know that Michigan has the best record against the spread in college football this year? Really? 10 and 2. Hmm. That surprised me. Yeah. A little shocking there. They're also 7 and 1 against the spread in their last eight and 6 and 3 against the spread versus the Hawkeyes in the last nine. That That's a kind of a tricky, that's where you get into tricky waters where you start bringing up past years and stuff like that. But it's still something I think you got to keep in mind. Uh, the Hawkeyes are 12 and 6 against the spread in their last 18. So that's, to keep in mind, too. I think it's going to be a very old school Big Ten football game. A lot of punting, like we said. The under is four and one in the last five games between these two teams. And the more I think about it, I agreed with you at first. A huge come down game. Iowa is the perfect team to like play spoiler in this situation because they, they play Michigan's ga same game. Other than They'll Purdue. <laughs> spoiler maker. Yeah. Spoiler makers will be unfortunately watching this one from the couch. <laughs> but yeah, Iowa plays the same game Michigan does. They're not going to get hit in the mouth without hitting back. It's going to go back and forth. But the more I think about it, I just think Jim Harbaugh is going to have the boys ready. They've come too far now. Yeah. This is his chance at the playoffs. I don't think they've ever been in a Big Ten championship game. Not under Harbaugh, I don't think. Right. And he, yeah, because Harbaugh's never made the playoffs. This is his chance to do it. This is his chance to prove everyone wrong. Ten and a half points is a lot. I still don't know what I'm going to do with the spread. This is going to be a game time decision for me as well because, yeah. Ten I'm and thinking half. under. Under, I think for sure. I think this is a 17 to 14 game. Yeah. It's just a matter of who I think has the ball last or who may, who like has one less turnover. So right now I am leaning Iowa plus 10 and a half just because of I think this is going to be a closer game. Than if it was nine and a half, I think that's a different story. But that half, that half point above 10, I like that a lot. Yeah. So maybe end up buying a point the other way just to like yeah. bring it to single digits. I'm super excited for this game. It's going to be the exact antithesis of what I love in football. It's going to just be a lot of punting, a lot of running, a lot of defense. It's going to be tough for me to watch, but I'm going to make myself do it because I'm trying to learn to appreciate the other aspects of football, not just 500-yard passing games yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. That's your type. It is, 100%. <laughs> Matt I'm, has a type. <laughs> I am an absolute slut for offensive football. <laughs> I just love it. I just love oh, it. I, yeah, they just get me every time. There's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing more satisfying than just like a comeback route or like a two-minute offense run to perfection. 
Oh yeah, I definitely. don't know what it is. It just gets my heart racing. Right, and they got the they got the hurry up offense. Like hurry up offense. It's like, oh my god, they're not huddling. Oh yeah, exactly. Oh, they're doing. It's like they're doing something naughty. I don't know why. Like, oh, you're supposed to be huddling, but no, they're just going right to the line and doing cool hand sh- signals and stuff like that. They look like they're in Naruto, just doing shit like that. And then like when they like don't go out of bounds, they get the big play. Like, what are you doing? You gotta spike the yeah, ball. You gotta yeah, run a play. Said, clock it, clock, clock it. it. What are you clock doing? It. I'm just in, in my room, just going clock it, clock <laughs> it. Pressing circle on my pretend Madden controller. <laughs> What are you guys doing? You're just standing around. Yeah, honestly, get put me in, coach. <laughs> in yeah, one of those moments. And then just yeah, if there's a quick response to if a team scores and another team scores like within the first three plays. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. That's Big Twelve football. That's what you that is described. Big Twelve football. I should yeah, I should have ditched Minnesota. I should have gone to Oregon <laughs> instead. <laughs> yeah, right. But I'll be watching a lot of Lincoln Riley games, but. Game time decision on the spread. I'm leaning Iowa right now, but I do think Michigan wins this game and makes it into the playoffs, which leads me to our final segment of the night. It's time for us to predict who is going to the college football playoffs. Okay. I think Houston upsets Cincinnati. You think? I th- Cincinnati. You think they're still frauds after all this time? Yes. Houston's a decent team. They're a ranked team. They are. Since, I mean... Their coach is thinking about leaving. I don't know. Cincinnati, though, we've we've done this song and dance all year. We oh, they're going to get exposed. Oh, they're going to get exposed. Oh, they need to play someone real. Yeah, I think that's going to happen. Houston's not a bad team. I just I think it's time that Cincinnati loses. You think they're drinking too much of the Kool Aid there, there in Cincinnati? Too much Bearcat Kool Aid there. Oh, sounds gross. So, I think Houston's out. I think Oklahoma State wins. Okay, and they sneak in. Uh, you think they're four? I think they go in four. Yeah. Okay, I have Cincinnati at four. I just think we have keep waiting for them to fail. I think we have to watch it happen in the playoffs. I think they have just, they're in too much of a mission. They've got the underdog mentality. They're going to come in, handle business this game just to get stomped by Georgia. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I got Cincinnati at four. I got Bama at three. I think they probably lose to Georgia in the, in the SEC championship. I think it's close. So I think they still get in at three. Quality loss. Exactly. Yeah. I think Michigan gets in at two, mm-hmm. and then I got Georgia at one. Okay. And then I have Georgia beating Cincinnati, Alabama beating Michigan, SEC rematch, Bama beats Georgia. Whoa. That's quite it's the hard. Time it's line. hard hard to beat a team twice. Yeah. Very hard to beat a team twice. Sports writers just popped a wood. You just saying that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've already got their first sentence written out for them. It was a day of revenge. <laughs> Wherever they held the national championship. They'll have that written by the first quarter. Oh, yeah. hundred percent. As Saban raised his hands triumphantly for the 12 millionth time. As Saban shits on Kirby Smart's chest. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. I'm very excited to watch all play out. Did you is, does your top three look the same after? Yeah, you know, Oklahoma State. I go. Yeah, Oklahoma State loses to Georgia. Yep. Yeah, I don't. I don't hate that. Bama, Michigan. Who do you think? I you think, think Bama. Bama beats Michigan. I, Michigan. They make the playoffs. They don't go far. No, I agree. They just, just. It's a win for them to make it to the playoffs at this point. It's so weird. College teams are on such different pedestals. Yeah. Like what's considered success? Like like for for my Gophers, it was considered a big win for them to beat wisconsin but then right after you hear that the offensive coordinator's still leaving or whatever right like they're still making changes yeah. stuff like that wisconsin blew it also by the way because they go it's like wisconsin could have easily been in this big 10 championship and they didn't they goofed <laughs> they goofed they go- they got goofed they got goofed mm-hmm. were you at the game or no no i wasn't i watched every snap on tv though yeah don't know how they pulled it off really I didn't watch the game, actually. I saw Wisconsin got a pick six. That's about it. Yeah, it was not a super exciting game. It was just, it's so, the Gophers offense is just so interesting to watch. It's literally all halfback draws and four verts. <laughs> like, I swear 90% of Tanner Morgan's passing productivity comes from just quick seams to the tight end. Yeah, it's I all, don't know how he sneaks it in every time. It's all ask Madden. Pretty much. <laughs> that it feels like how they do it. and But now it's going to change, even though Tanner Morgan is coming back. Which is kind of bittersweet. Not good. You can just say not good. I don't want to say that. The guy just beat Wisconsin. You're living in 2019. Probably. <laughs> no, you are. Yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> but you, you, what do you t- tell him? No, go away. You don't. I mean, do they have any good freshmen? Anything well, they like had that? Zach Anik said, but he's now transferring. Oof. He was like the young, promising quarterback, but he got hurt. So then 
Tanner Morgan got back in and then he's kept the job ever since. Yeah. It's tough when it's like a high character guy to like tell him to scram. Yeah. I don't know. I think the Gophers are screwed for another year until Morgan leaves. Damn. Just such a pessimist. I mean, did he show any any promise this year? You used to see him throw that seam route, man. <laughs> <laughs> he sneaks it in there somehow. I don't know how he does it. It's just really quick. Yeah. I, do, I don't know how the linebackers don't react to it. I really don't. <laughs> it takes me two seconds of watching the game to like to like figure it out. They watch year a season's worth of film and they can't figure it out. One positive note for the Gophers: Don't they get uh uh what's his name? The running back, Ibrahim. I do believe he is coming back. I'm yeah. not entirely sure, but I do believe he's coming back. So that's good. Don't don't sleep on those Gophers. They were ranked. For, they were ranked for a game this year, before <laughs> losing to Illinois. Yeah. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. You'll miss it. Yep. Um. You got any other games you like this weekend, or are we wrapping this guy up? Um. I'm really nervous about the Vikings Lions game. No way. Really? Yeah, it's I, a seven point spread, I believe. I don't. I don't like it. I don't. I'm not. I don't know. That <laughs> Niners game was god awful. So sloppy. Kirk Cousins lined up. There it is. Under- Here he goes. Here he goes. Get, let it out. Let it out. This is a safe space. Kirk Cousins lined up at the guard, not center. That has to be a goal. trick play. He's a no. It wasn't. You said. You literally said. I just went to the wrong guy. Literally. Come on. It was a fourth and goal. Come on, Kirk. Uh, yeah. Play clock was ticking. That's rough. <laughs> Dalvin's out. Daniel Hunter's out. Their star <laughs> left tackles out. Their rookie. They got Adam Thielen. <laughs> yeah, he can only do so much. Jefferson was pissed. He kept throwing his arms up. Yeah. Underrated bad body language, Justin Jefferson. Yeah, he's he's starting to reach that digs territory. Yes. My I talked to my brother. He's like, I'm already done with Justin Jefferson. He's like, he's, <laughs> like, right? he's, like, he's, like he's like, I'm already accepted. He, he loves him. He's a great player, obviously. Yeah, he's, like, he's gone. He's like, he's gonna leave. He's gonna pull a digs. Yeah, I would not be shocked. Yeah. Defense is I mean, they had four defense alignment out. Yeah, Vikings, and that's a horrible matchup against the Niners. Yeah, I should have taken that bet. I, I was, I told you, I was drinking the purple Kool Aid a bit. I got on the Vikings bandwagon after the Packers game, and I was like, you know, what? I think they're a better team. I know, I know the Niners are heating up. The Niners are in process of, I mean, they are in the playoffs as of right now, like they're getting good. But I just, and they thought, got the tiebreaker go over the Vikings. They do, which will probably be pretty big Huge. moving forward. But I just thought three and a half points for the Vikings. The Vikings just playing such close games that. I just didn't. I just didn't buy. It. I thought it was your pessimistic purple people eater was coming out. Yeah, it's it's bad. It's purple purgatory. That's where purple I'm purgatory. There you go. Get ready for another nine seven and one season. <laughs> we'll sneak into the playoffs and lose right away. Hey, you never know. Well, like if so, like Packers are the one seed. Yep. So there's a chance the Vikings will have to go to Lambo twice in one month. That's rough. Yeah, not fun. The Packers kind of have the one seed pretty locked up at this point, right? That win over the Rams was pretty big. I guess Tampa could still probably get Tampa, it. Tampa, maybe uh, Arizona. Oh, I, oh, But I guess they would have the tiebreaker also. I keep them. forgetting Arizona's good. I feel like no one's talked about them in the last month because Kyler hasn't played in like a month. Low key, I think Cliff Kingsbury's resting his guys. I do too. Yeah. I mean, they have their division pretty much on lock at this point. They have a three mm. or four game lead. Right. That will pr- probably get a buy. I honestly would not be surprised. I think they are doing the smart thing too. They're playing the long game, but then there's always the factor of is Russ going to be a factor come, like when push comes to shove. Are there guys going to be rusty? Are they not going to like? I think he's resting his guys soon enough that Russ will be. that will be kicked off. They'll, kicked they'll play off. like that week 16, yep. 17, 18. They'll spray some WD forty on that Rust and be ready for the playoffs. Great metaphor. <laughs> Is that a metaphor? Or that's just a visual visualization. Whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, it's both. It's yeah. Made I keep forget. Yeah, I keep forgetting the Cardinals are good. Like I, they just they I haven't crossed my mind in the last month or so. I haven't like watched a single yeah. one of their games. They're just on standby right now. Yeah, and that's how, that's honestly what it feels like. Because mm-hmm. then uh, Kyler tweeted like the gif of Thanos like resting or whatever and being ready to like roll. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think they're totally. You think they got a plan. I think so. That'll be fun to watch. Yeah, I hope. If that is the case, I hope Larry Fitzgerald comes back. Oh, that'd be sick. I really, I would do anything for Larry Fitzgerald to win a Super Bowl. What would you do? Um, not really. Realistically, <laughs> not anything. I'd probably pay like a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. I yeah, I would honestly pay a hundred dollars. He should come back. Why not? Well, I think he probably is. He, Didn't Marshawn Lynch do that a few years ago? He did. That was that was very random. I remember that. He came back to Seattle, right? Yeah, I think that was only like two years ago. Yeah, so like he could do a Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, and he hasn't even been gone that long. I think he and they do kind of need a receiver because AJ Green and DeAndre Hopkins are both kind of injured right now. Mm-hmm. I like th- throw him in the red zone, perfect target. 
Yeah, he doesn't need to play every snap. He just no. needs to be on the big plays. Get Larry Fitzgerald to Daniel. And if Williams. anything, he's a great decoy. Uh, they, they, I don't know if Larry Fitzgerald commands that much attention in the red zone anymore. Maybe he would. He's a big body. He's got old man strength, too. He does, and he's got football IQ and high character. But if you see Larry Fitzgerald on the field, like coordinators are probably like, oh, fuck. They're going to yeah, at least like try and get him the ball. Right. Like, they didn't just bring him out here just to run block. Just put him in motion and then... Just... He is a Walter Payton man of the year. We got to respect that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put respect in his name. Yeah. So, yeah, that's going to be my main goal for the rest of the season. Get Larry Fitzgerald to ring somehow. Whether I have to do it in Madden <laughs> or what, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> When you play Madden, do you ever do like fake storylines in your head when you're doing like franchise mode? Dude, if I told you how deep I've gotten into the fake storylines, I would literally <laughs> not have a girlfriend anymore. I have na- like little storylines for all the players. I've na- dude, especially my my 2K player, I got absurd one summer. I got so it was so embarrassing. I would play for about three four hours every single night. I literally I made I brought the Lakers. I took Kobe's spot of the two. I brought the Lakers to the championship in the game six. I dropped sixty points. <laughs> Missed two shots and they did it. They offered me the worst contract out of like all the other teams that offered me a contract. Bro, what? I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I don't think I wasn't a very, I didn't get the good team teammate grades a good amount of the time. You're right. I demanded like, the ball a, a healthy amount. You're like, well, he had like off the court issues or something. So, yeah. And I, and I also was a little <laughs> shit and just answer all the press conference questions <laughs> with antagonistic <laughs> viewpoints. Yeah. So I got that. So then I just went to the Heat and won a championship with them, but it just wasn't as fun. But yeah, in Madden, <laughs> I do, I do a franchise every year. This year I did one with the Browns, and yeah, I get way too deep into it in my own head. It is so sad. It is a shock. It is a shock. I have a girlfriend in the first place. I I don't let her see. Who's your favorite like franchise like random generated player that you like really attached to? So I did an online one with some friends last year, and. It, we had a quarterback, Joe Cannon was his name. Oh, that's and, a great name. And, his, and he was like, no, like his his attribute was like gunslinger. You're like, fuck yeah. Yeah, he was an a- absolute <laughs> lock to get drafted. He was a stud too. He was so good. So yeah, Joe Cannon for sure. <laughs> Joe Cannon. He was like the first overall pick. He was like the Andrew Luck of the draft. Nice. It was so much fun. So dedicating this season to Larry Fitzgerald and Joe Cannon. Joe Cannon. That's a great name. It was unreal. It was so much fun. <laughs> My team still sucked, but at least we had, at least Joe Can was in the fray with the mix. Absolute style. All right, we're starting to get a little loopy here, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Have fun watching college football this weekend. Try and force yourself to watch some NFL, but if you don't want to, don't. It's not a bad thing to take a Sunday off. Right, and you'll you'll probably be you know tired from Saturday. There'll be a lot of great games Saturday. Yeah, exactly. The biggest game will be Monday night, which we're going to come back and do a Monday podcast mm-hmm. to to do that one i'm putting it on the air right now so we hold ourselves to it we've, smart we've been wanting to do a monday edition of the podcast for a while to a, a week bonus episode yeah we're gonna move to two a week so be excited for that hopefully we leave the british accent at home this time because that was a rough start but <laughs> i kind of liked it so enjoy your weekends guys enjoy college football we're still working on new tagline so we'll <laughs> get that one there if anyone knows a way to get Larry Fitzgerald a Super Bowl ring, please let me know DM in the us. comments. Yeah. yeah. DM us on goose egg, goose.egg.gamble on social media. See ya. See ya.